Hey everybody, this is Mr. Dr. Logic here. I'm going to give you a presentation of Bio 372. But, all right, I get it. This looks a lot like the professors, the way they do the Zoom online shit. But honestly, I'm not going to have a filter. I'm just going to present the way the way I see things and makes more sense to me. If there's any confusion or misunderstanding, let me know in the comment section below. Okay, so this is primarily going to be about bacterial DNA and eukaryotic DNA. And it's important to recognize what bacterial DNA is and eukaryotic DNA is because bacterial DNA, whatever happens to that, is going to be used as a basis because it's very simple. And we're going to try and use that to understand if anything similar is happening in eukaryotic DNA. As you can see here right off the bat, there's a pointer, bacterial DNA, one big ass circle. Well, it's kind of tiny if you compare it to the nuclear DNA that's in the nucleus. This does not do justice in size comparison. There's probably a good number, but this is like 10,000 times bigger than this easily. But yeah, basically, Bio372, sketchy summaries or molecular biology fourth level. I'm going to make this as public as possible. I need to make some money off this video. <laughs> okay, now, did you know that bacterial DNA is circular? This has nothing to do with eukaryote DNA. Because eukaryote DNA is like a super complicated woven like sweater. Like it's so complicated. In the next video, you're going to see like we're taking a uh, what? strings and we're wrapping it around marbles like that's how complicated it gets and then we put those things we're rearranging it again we're just lego 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 and then we have a fucking pyramid we're building a pyramid out of legos this is basically what eukaryotic dna is it's not like you care bacterial dna bacterial dna i would describe as like an f1 track very simple very straightforward bacterial uh dna is replicated and uh it needs to be cut by test I'm not gonna even pronounce that. Basically, this enzyme is very uh, helpful for coiling or cutting DNA. Very helpful, very super easy to understand. Basically, I've made a simple drawing to like illustrate this. Also, coiling is about to prevent too much replication. It'll just bind and unbind. We'll get on one that later. Often described as like this. I don't even know if it's a true picture, but basically, it's like a C shape. Well, technically, it's a circle, but I've given it a C shape. And it just snip snips the DNA right off. So this bacterial DNA, you see this right here, DNA insert, cut. It just cuts that shit right off. In the next slide, you're going to see that this replication bubble is where this replication happens. We'll get into more on how that, why that happens. But basically, from the previous slide, teal, uh, teal, pff, the cutting, D, the cutting enzyme will basically cut this from these two points and then just leave it out here in the open exactly like that that's the point of this that's all you need to know this is how um replication of bacterial dna happens and just in case you're a little confused like how is it going to escape it's actually being done on the 3d planes if you're lucky you might have something crazy like this where it just mass replicates this is used for um i believe penicillin fantastic way of mass producing it so i wanted to give a real life picture just so that we can visualize what it actually is look like this is very simple we can almost see the organic dna itself from this picture as in you carry out uh, good luck good luck like look at this shit this is not even f1 this is like what is this this is like mario kart like put three levels together this is what you got this is like baby course this this is exactly what i'm describing about complexity but this is not the only time where complexity is going to become an issue and we'll talk more about that. So yeah, if you're going to see replication, just that. The cutting thing, and then the replication bubble. Boom, new DNA. Instantly like that. Of course, there are going to be multiple versions of it, but it's just going to be circles upon circles. Okay, now to get more into the nitty-gritty about the DNA replication. Because there's only a single site that initiates in prokaryotes and multiple sites in eukaryotes. I don't understand the actual reason of why this happens in eukaryotes. And my best answer is... It has everything to do with size, okay? There are also promoter sites, but let's not get into that. No one knows where the promoter site is, what it does. Fuck that shit. But for prokaryotes, their size is really small. Like, you can see here, very tiny. We can almost see the DNA itself. We can pretty much see the histones that it's wrapped in. But yeah, eukaryotes, different ballpark. And also for eukaryotes, they're really, really large DNA sequences. They're all bundled up together. I When I set a sweater, I was not kidding. You're basically making an infinite scarf and basically if you have only like what one origin site or like one replication site it's gonna take fucking forever and also most of these chromosomes they are not connected like 
you see these like this is a terrible example but most of them are not connected they're just a bunch of lines just hanging out now we're going to get more into the nitty-gritty about the chromosome structure forget bacterial dna we've talked too much about it in the first part now we're going to get into the second part this is what like a chromatid looks like you see the p you see the q centromere and then the telomere we're going to talk about all that just shortly just recognize that the origin of replication centromere la, 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 la. origin of replication easy as shit all right we basically discussed this earlier the uh, uh, bacterial dna one side prokaryotes all that shit eukaryotes everywhere bro don't even try it now let's just move on to the second one centromeres are required for the correct second uh, yada yada yeah they basically this is important for dna replication i'm not even going to try and pronounce that it's responsible for pulling the two sister chromatids away so this is very important for like it being a congestion point and being very easy to yoink apart. Apparently, this can split, which is even more like crazy to me, but whatever. Yeah, this is pretty much through anaphase. Well, metaphase, it's more visible. Like you can see it in anaphase, it's pulled apart into two different things. Size varies. No way of determining that. So, yeah, this is like all the coolest versions of anaphase, and you can see all those like spindles. Shit, but this is what it looks like in real life, especially inside of a cell super cool super amazing but like the animated stuff and the quality is just Ooh! all right let's move on three telomeres located at the two linear ends of the chromosome this is really important actually i never would have guessed that so basically located on the ends important this is bacterial dna once again these regions are tg rich regions so like dna like what nucleotides g and nucleotide t very important they repeat a lot all right okay so this point is basically about like what the telomere attracts like these telomere proteins or like different proteins and basically bundles it up at that end this is mainly to prevent uh DNA integration i don't know why but basically if there's nothing to what attack the ends it prevents uh DNA to be split apart by like helicase or anything like that. And then this is meant to resist frequent recombination. So basically elongation of the DNA, which makes it more susceptible for it to be cut or just, just flat out destroyed. Or making new alleles. You don't want any genetic fuck-ups. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's the end of the video. Grab end of the video. See ya. Irrelevant, but I gotta show you this. Look at this design. Oh my god. Like, if I had the time... Oh, oh my gosh, look at all these designs, look, especially this one, like, what the fuck, <laughs> that's just distracting, but I still love it.